Hey there internet, welcome to the Hard On Gear channel where I discuss and review my use and abuse knives and gear. Okay, 10 different ways to deploy a folding knife. If you have only ever had one knife or you're not super into folding knives, you're going to be super shocked to know there's that many freaking ways to do it. If you have have a bunch of folding knives there's probably gonna be one or two here that you've never done before or did not know existed but these are just 10 generic opening types you can do with most knives uh, with a couple of exceptions mostly the very last option i'm going to talk about but i'll go through each one i've got 10 different knives laid out in front of me here again this is only really folding knives kind of uh, mostly lock backs but slip joints a lot of this stuff works as well uh, I'm not talking about fixed blades, though there's plenty of different ways to do fixed blades other than just your typical uh, on the hip carry. Uh, if you want to see, I think, nine or ten different ways to do to do fixed blades, feel free to check out the uh, ten different fixed blade carry options video. There's a short as well, I think, that goes over about nine of those. Uh, and then as well for this one, there'll be another short out, which will be ten different ways to uh, deploy a folding knife in like a minute. So if you don't have any patience, you can skip over and check that video out. So jumping into the first knife, and if you haven't noticed, I'm doing a little bit different video format, standing up away from the tabletop stuff, trying to pay attention to the comments, and uh, trying to do something a little bit different than the typical tabletop stuff as much as I can. Also trying not to wear all black. I have limited civilian clothes with me, so if you see me wear the same two or three sets of clothes every time, I'm just trying to not wear black on black and have all my knives disappear on me. And if this is the type of content you want to see more of, please click the like button as that drives the video up for more knife people to see and gets this video up to the top of their list and feel free to subscribe if you have not done so yet to the hard on gear channel okay first way to open a knife is the simple old man way to do it which is the two-handed method i'm using a victor Knox pioneer x here which is pretty much the only way you're going to get one of these open you're not going to thumb flick a uh, swiss army knife now most uh civilized people who don't just sit and play around with folding knives all the time like myself and probably like most of you guys watching, aren't going to open a knife any different than this. This is the only way you really need to do it. And anything beyond that is just kind of, you know, being fancy, showboating. And now tactical situations or emergency situations, if you're like EMS or something like that, totally different. But for just going to slice open a package, you really don't need to do anything fancier than open it up like a normal person. Uh, like one of my good friends from college, my college roommate, he opens every one of his knives up. I'll show him one of my cool, fancy knives. Like I'd hand him a Benchmade M4 Freak and automatically I see this and I either want to use the lock to deploy it or I want to thumb flick it, which we'll get into these in a minute. He'll go up and he'll look and be like, wow, that's a really nice knife. And I'll kind of want to smack him. But yeah, you know who you are if you're watching this. Second most boring way to open a knife, which is in the same ballpark as the first one, is the thumb wheel. The very slow, gentle, safe, one-handed thumb wheel. Nothing wrong with that. Super practical, non-fancy, show-offy way to open a knife. But I can't say I ever, unless I'm trying to be really quiet or something and not trying to engage the lock really aggressively. Yeah, maybe I'll thumb wheel it open, but almost never, because I'm not normally sneaking up trying to, you know pull assassin stuff on people you're not going to see me quietly thumb wheeling open my knife so yeah the uh, thumb wheel number two another again kind of old man method of opening a knife if you ask me the advancement of that is kind of the way that most of us are going to open knives with a thumb flick feels a little more aggressive looks a little more cool makes me feel like i'm slightly more tactical than i am with these uh some of these more aggressive knives like the cold steel code four uh the triad lock for sure when you give it a good thumb flick really snaps open on you and it gives you a nice little tingle yeah, the thumb flick probably the most commonly used way of deploying a knife uh, at least amongst knife people you can do that with just about every knife system. Oh, and this triad lock is getting gunked up. I can feel it needs a little bit of compressed air, maybe a little bit of oil. <laughs> yeah, uh, triad lock, great. Holds up well, does get gritty and can get even tougher to operate. Anyways, I digress. Depending on what knife you're using, you can do it with anything with a hole or a stud, just so long as it's something more than a little uh, thumb notch, like you'll get on a Swiss Army knife or some small uh, traditional folders. Open L, another good example of a knife that works like that. And then there's some knives like the uh, Cold Steel Luzon or the CRKT M16, at least most variants of it, where the thumb studs aren't really thumb studs. They're external stopping pins, which I didn't even know till about a year or so ago because I haven't used many flippers, but most flipper knives aren't really going to be able to be used with the thumb studs, only the flipper tabs. So a lot of these deployments, uh, deployment methods aren't going to work for something like a flipper knife. 
Same for the cold steel triad locks and a lot of the stiffer uh, acting folders like this. A lot of the methods say like a drop deploy, which we'll get into. I can almost get it, but it's just a little too stiff. You can adjust the pivots and do a lot of stuff to get these knives working like that, but uh, some knives are gonna work better for certain deployment methods than others. Number four, I've got, I'm calling it the blade catch, but it could be Emerson Wave, the uh, snail tooth for the cold steels. Right now I've got a zip tie on the end of a Spyderco uh, Spidey hole, uh, the whole separate video on that. If you've never seen how to do the uh, Spyderco, uh, what do you, what I call it? The uh, Spidey Wave or Spyderco Wave or whatever you wanna call it. I don't wanna get sued by Emerson Wave, but the, uh, it's very simple. Just put a zip tie around the hole, make sure it's orientated the right direction for your pocket. And then when you slide it in your pocket, it should work the same as an Emerson Wave or Snaggletooth or any other uh, pocket opening device like that so that you deploy it straight out of the pocket so that it catches the lip on the end of the blade and deploys out of your pocket. Number five, the reverse flick, or if you're holding a spider co, you can certainly call it the spidey flick, which pretty much everyone's familiar with. You're not gonna be doing the spidey flick with a lot of cheaper knives or anything like super stiff and rigid like a cold steel uh, triad lock knife, most of them anyways, maybe with the 8010 or something a little bit more expensive and smooth, but ah, almost with the code four. If it was super clean and lubed up, maybe. But yeah, not so much. But the reverse flick, not super practical. There's really no other reason to do it other than fidget factor or like when you're doing tabletop videos, it's kind of satisfying for myself and I think you as well uh, to watch me sit there and reverse flick it. Uh, Spidey flick, obviously because you're holding a spider a co and if you ever have seen a Spider-Man cartoon or comic or movie in your life, you can kind of get the visual of why that's called spider flick. Anyways, uh, spider flick, reverse flick can be done with anything with a decent... Uh, hole or tab or stud that's the word i'm looking for so anything like a nice smooth bench made thumb stud no problem when you're getting into your cold steels again even the uh, 80 15 which is pretty smooth pretty heavy knife hard to do a reverse flick Ugh, not gonna happen bit of a side tangent for the few of you who actually care about this if you are carrying uh, the stuff for self-defense if you're a law enforcement officer or whatever maybe not get in the habit of doing that all the time because i know there's been times when i've hauled out of my pocket and gone to reverse flick it and like launched it to the ground so i stopped a long time ago reverse flicking it on my normal day-to-day -day use and only doing it when i'm fidgeting or talking about knives so out of the pocket maybe not the most practical way to deploy a knife Number six, calling it the blade drop. Again, now if you're holding a spider co, you can call it the spidey drop, what a lot of people are familiar with, but uh, holding it by the hole, or if there's really oversized thumb studs and you wanna try it, maybe, or even just a really thick, sturdy blade, like, let me think here, for example, the Benchmade M4 Freak, big, thick blade at the top here. I don't wanna drop it, but if I do, hopefully the M4 steel will hold up. Yeah, so I'm gonna pull a little bit out here just to be safe, but you can kinda of do it with that, but I don't see why you would. Even with the Spidey hole or any kind of a bigger hole like the uh, Benchmade Griptilian, uh, the version with that round hole, but not the Spyderco tr trademarked round hole, it's going to work pretty well for the reverse drop, but it's not nearly as good as those big oversized Spidey holes. So pretty much well known to everyone as the Spidey drop. The only way I could ever see this being used, I think it was, uh, what's his name? The uh, guy from Bassinelli there, who uh, was, he did a video talking about a few different deployment methods. And when he was doing this one, and somebody was asking, or whoever was filming, like what the practicality was. And he said, if you were ever doing fine little tip work like that, you're right into the position where you'd go dice up like whatever you were doing. So maybe for fine kitchen work, the uh, Spidey drop has got some kind of use. If you've got what the uh, Spidey Chef, the LC200 and uh, kind of like, cooking design folding knife maybe you'd use it that as your primary deployment method other than that just again a fidgety way that's kind of useless but sort of fun to deploy your knife okay reverse grip drop deploy now i could call this a gravity deploy or gravity drop i'm gonna try not to use that because i know in canada and a lot of other countries you're not allowed to have gravity knives. A gravity knife, I think by definition, is any knife that can be opened with one flicking motion without any button or thumb stud or any kind of an assistance. In the States, not a big deal, and you don't care about any of that, so I'll just say the uh, drop deploy or gravity deploy, whatever you're doing, you're basically using gravity and a little bit of a wrist flick to deploy the knife in a reverse grip. Uh, now you can do it with most knives as long as the action is fairly smooth. If they can be reverse flicked, there's a pretty good chance you're going to be able to uh, drop deploy it. Now the Manix 2 here is a little bit stiff for it, but if I, yeah, see just the right angle and the right uh, momentum, I'm not a physics expert, but I know just the right way to make that weight of the blade kind of help you out, makes it pretty easy. 
uh, with a knife like the M4 Freak, which is super smooth, very uh, broken in. I'm pretty sure that's gonna, yeah, almost like nothing. So yeah, the uh, reverse draw doesn't really have a lot of practicality unless you are drawing a knife from a pocket on your opposite, opposite hand. So the only reason I know that is if I had uh, my Cold Steel Recon 1 here, I could show you. I've only got the right hand pocket clip left for that. So for the last few years I was carrying it, I'd carry it left hand with the right hand pocket clip in. So I'd draw it reverse grip and uh, deploy it and then reverse my grip around. Now, any normal situation, you'd never have to do that, but I was actually deploying like this a fair amount of the time. Now, if I was in front of other people, I wouldn't try and look like a D-bag, and I'd actually just like move it around in my hand and then open it like with a thumb flick or something. But nonetheless, uh, can be used. The only thing you gotta worry about, of course, is throwing your freaking knife into the ground or launching it like backwards 10 feet into somebody's leg, which wouldn't be super good. So as you're doing this, you're seeing, I'm putting a lot of uh, wrist momentum into this only because this one's not a great one to be doing this with. But even then, uh, if you're doing it the right way and you're getting the angle right, you should be able to, yeah, do it without too much effort and too much risk of sending your knife flying into somebody's body. Deploying with the lock, number eight, seven, eight. Eight. So lock deployment with uh, unique locks like the Scorpion lock on the AD-15. I mean, this is one of the main ways I open this knife anyways. The thumb stud works really good on it, but without a doubt, like this thing is made to be opened and operated with the lock. The Scorpion lock, super obvious once you get this thing figured out. It's an easy thing to operate. At first, not so obvious and extremely annoying. At first, you wonder why would they do something like this when all the normal locks out there exist. However, once you get used to the one-handed operation of it, it's one of the slickest things you could ever put on a knife, and I would definitely like to see Cold Steel come out with some more of this stuff, depending on what happens with them in the next couple years under their new ownership. Same thing for the axis locks or the ball bearing locks, anything like that. Uh, lock operations, super simple for these. Actually, I know my uh, one of the old conservation officers at my old workplace, he had an old Benchmade Griptilian, almost identical to this, except it had the thumb studs instead of the hole. And the thumb studs had fell out and he'd lost them. So he was just primarily stuck with opening it with the axis lock, which was no issue for him at all. So nice to have that as a backup. Something like the triad lock from Cold Steel. <laughs> I've actually never tried this in my life. And I had that recon one for the last like almost 10 years. I've never tried to deploy with the lock before. And there's an obvious reason because as soon as you even think about it, it's the most awkward and dangerous thing I think I've tried on this channel so far. I'm gonna hurt myself, but yeah, you can see that's not gonna happen. So uh, yeah, you can definitely maybe find a way to do that, but I'm not gonna try right now because I almost stabbed myself in the leg. The same can be said for a frame lock or a liner lock. Uh, you're probably not gonna be deploying it with the lock because you're never gonna get in there while it's closed. And I, again, that's definitely not, if you can do it, it's definitely not a safe or good idea to do so. Okay, number nine, and I apologize if my camera work is garbage on this. I'm still getting used to where the camera is with this new setup, so I will adjust if I'm slightly off center here. But uh, Benchmade M4 Freak that you're looking at. Again, super smooth, buttery operation on this thing, so a very good one to show the example of the wrist flick, which is number nine, which again, the sh these knives don't come to uh, meant to be deployed like this because, again, in Canada, I believe this is technically illegal to have a knife that's able to flick open without the operation of a thumb stud or button or any kind of like a, you know, anything that's made to help assist you in the deployment of it, other than just using gravity to, but once you get a knife smoothed out enough, or if you loosen up the uh, pivot screw, you can get most knives to open up pretty easy. However, you're going to get them to start wobbling and the blade centering is going to get a little wonky on you. So don't recommend you go over loosening any of your pivots up because you're going to have your knives coming apart on you. It's better to have a little bit of stability and have that operating the way it should than just to have it extra loose just so you can do extra fidgety deployments and stuff. Now, there's really no reason why you'd want to do this because almost every freaking knife is going to come with a thumb stud or a hole or some kind of a way to help you out opening it. Again, I'll refer to that conservation officer I know who lost the uh thumb studs for his griptilian and the thumb hole in this not not an issue i'm not going to lose that hole but the uh, thumb studs which are very similar to that bench made thumb stud there that he lost he still has the axis lock maybe if he needed to he could open it with a gravity deployment if he was like in a really big hurry and didn't want to fidget with it 
that's kind of a nice option, but you're not supposed to be able to do that. And I remember reading somewhere on a forum, uh, I think Border Services Canada, when they're checking folding knives that come across the border, so if they're going to open up a Benchmade, make sure it's not automatic and whatever, they're also going to do a bunch of checks. And I think it was one guy, and I don't know how well sourced this is, but the way the guy described it, he said he would try 10 different angles of deploying a knife, and if it would open more than, I think, two different ways, he would class it as like illegal because it would be gravity opening knife. So if he would try a bunch of these, uh, now when this Benchmade was brand new, it wouldn't open this easily. So I don't think it would fail the test. But if he would get three openings, I think it was, out of 10 with all the different deployment methods he would try, then that would be a no-go. Just something to keep in mind if you're in Canada, Australia, England, I think, is even more strict because I think you're not even allowed having lockback knives, but I could be wrong on that. But I know if you're in Scandinavia, you're basically down to like Swiss Army knives and stuff like that. Yeah, the wrist flicks there, uh, it's kind of fun. Like it feels like you're doing something that the knife's not supposed to do. So I don't know, somewhat entertaining. Aside from that, uh, you're probably going to use the thumb stud and hold most of the time. Last but not least, and some people's absolute favorite way to deploy a knife, and sometimes the only type of knife that people buy, the flipper tab. So I don't have a lot of flippers. I've got a couple extra that aren't here. The Cold Steel Medium Lose on is back home. I'm going to get a few of these other knives sent to me at some point here because uh, I've got a little update to talk about from course. I've got to have a little extra time on my hands here in the next couple of months as I wait for my back to recover and get back in shape because I'm now off course. Womp womp. I'll bitch about that in another video. But for now, i uh, just talk about one flipper I've got on me. CRKT M16 03BS. Yes, that's the one I can never keep those M16 numbers right. Uh, but the flipper tab... Super simple, push the back, knife flies open. It's kind of fun. I remember showing my dad the uh, lose on. He said it kind of reminded him of a switchblade or like something you weren't really supposed to have as a kid. And it kind of does have that feel, but uh, totally legal in almost any country that allows lockbacks. Just a uh, simple little flipper uh, mechanism on the back of the blade itself. Blade pops open. If it's not working on some of your knives, like I've got a smaller, uh, is it an M14? It might be an M14. Uh, zero, I can't even remember, SFD, some crazy combination of letters and numbers, but that little black thing I never carry. It's only, it's like, like the sixth or seventh video I ever put out. Uh, and that thing does not work almost at all with the flipper. If I have that thing fully lubricated up and I have it down with gravity and I flick it really hard, I can get it to open. Uh, but for the most part, if your flippers aren't working well, just stick a little bit of lube in the pivot and work that in and you shouldn't have much of an issue. Maybe loosen up the pivot a little bit. Other than that, uh, you just gotta break it in a little bit more if it's a newer knife. Same goes for a lot of these, just to wrap up. Uh, you need to break in most knives when they come in. Uh, cold steels are a good example of a knife that comes pretty rigid. Uh, pretty locked up tight, especially the triad locks. And you're going to have to sit there and like go over and over, open and close it a bunch of times. And I don't know if that's a big burden on a lot of people, because I know for myself at least, I pretty much do that anyways whenever I get a new knife, is annoy the crap out of anyone around me and just sit there and open and close it probably thousands of times within a, the first couple of weeks that I own them. And they're normally pretty broken in. Benchmades out of any brand, like Spyderco's definitely break in nice. Uh, the Manix 2 at first was a very rigid stiff opening i couldn't like i could thumb flick it but it was a pretty aggressive one i couldn't reverse flick it for probably the first two weeks and now you know it's pretty broken in a little dirty could be lubed up a little bit smoother uh but it's not bad bench maids really breaking nicely uh you're gonna take probably a week of just sitting and playing with the axis lock and then they're gonna break into the point where they'll just sit here and sway openly without any extra lubrication or any extra adjustment to the pivot so long as they stay relatively clean but yeah big fan of the bench made axis lock just for the deployments and the opening uh just again need a little bit of break in time with almost any of these knives ed15 just takes a little bit of a mental and physical break in time for your body to get used to understanding what's happening your brain rather because i know for everybody i hand this knife to it's not super intuitive but even if you can figure it out with two hands the one-handed opening of this is super awkward so any kind of a unique knife system or deployment system like that just take a little bit of extra time and don't cut yourself with this also probably a good thing to talk about is don't hand knives like these to people who've never handled these knives before and expect them not to drop them or cut themselves or do something stupid with them uh there's a whole bunch of guys have done videos on knives you shouldn't hand on knife people i know i've seen metal complexes uh definitely has a that's probably the top one on youtube if you want to search that up i'll probably end up trying to do that at some point when i get more of my knives up here but yeah just uh deployments 
all kinds of fun different ways to do it. Again, if you have another one that I haven't listed here, feel free to let me know down in the comments or link a video or whatever. If you do throw any links down in the comments, throw some other text in there as well, or else it'll be picked up as spam and they'll think you're some kind of crazy porn bot. If you have not clicked like, please feel free to click that button as that's the biggest thing you can do to help the channel out. Check out the other content that's gonna be popping up in the side panel. Thanks for tuning into this one and see you on the next one. This is the Hard On Gear channel signing off.